Good evening, everyone. Time for this week's silver update. For those of you who haven't noticed, I have added ads to my channel. Uh, YouTube has offered me a chance to monetize the channel, so I took them up on that. If you uh, want to see the channel grow and want to support the channel, go ahead and click on the ads and support the sponsors. If not, just click them off, but it will help help my channel grow, help me be able to be compensated a little bit for what I'm doing. I understand that some people object to advertisements. I actually think it's a, a good model, especially because the ads are custom to the interests. So you're going to see a lot of ads from Atmex and others and silver and gold related sites. So I have added that and uh, if you do have any objections or comments, go ahead and put it down below in the comments section. This chart that you're looking at is the five minute chart. I wanted to start with this chart because we had an interesting run up the other night where we had a nice breakout from the this breakout point right here of about 36.6. We had a nice technical breakout and a run we ended the day at a, a rough plateau here around 37.89 or so. And then in the after hours, roughly Asia opening or so, but of course I think it's on the Globex, but we had another technical breakout and a nice rally. And then at about 2 a.m., we reached a top and went to a normal correction and just as we were approaching that support line that we'd established like a retest you can see here on the volume chart someone came in and sold 15,000 contracts this is in the after hours you can see this volume spike actually exceeds any spike for the one two three four days you're looking at on this chart this one minute sale of 15,000 contracts is greater than any one minute sell even of the daily COMEX trading. So a pretty fantastic move and you can see the size of the move here. We went from roughly 38.9 to 36.2 or 3 roughly $2.60 so I want to do a little math real quick on that move and then I'm gonna go to Ted Butler's latest article that kind of addresses some of the same topics so if you pull out our calculator first of all we know that we had about 15,000 in volume and we multiply that times 5,000 ounces in a contract we come up with 75 million ounces so at this time frame here between well actually no not in that time frame but just in this time frame right here on the price move from about 37.7 to down to 36 a buck 50 move someone sold 75 million ounces now to per put that into perspective 75 million ounces is roughly 10% of all world silver mined in a year. So someone got up at about 5 in the morning and decided they wanted to sell 10% of the silver that had been mined in a year. Now that is patently absurd. Anybody who even takes an honest look at that would have to conclude that that is manipulation. It's ridiculous to the point of absurdity that someone in the middle of the night in thin trading would dump 10% of the entire world output of a commodity. So that's just a sample of the ridiculousness of what's going on in the silver market. Now, another example is when we take this amount that we've measured here, it's roughly 260, and we divide the silver price at the time was 33.80 so we take 2.6 divided by 33.8 we get 7.6 percent 
actually I'm sorry it wasn't 33.8 it was 38.8 so let's do that again we take 2.6 divided by 38.8 and we get 6.7 percent so let's do some quick math on let's take for example oil so with the price of oil let's say oil is a hundred that means oil would drop six dollars and seventy cents in one minute or let's let's look at the Dow the Dow's twelve thousand three hundred times point oh six seven so that's like the Dow in the overnight trading of the Dow dropping 824 points in a matter of minutes on no news. No fundamental news, no political news, no news at all. So that gives you an idea of the level of manipulation, the ridiculous volatility that goes on in the silver market of course it's to scare people out of course it's to suppress the price and it's just it's beyond absurd what they're doing with the market so let's get our technical view and pull up our MACD because we're still rising on the daily and we have crossed over we've recovered a lot of that smackdown that happened we're coming up we were almost to 39 that night we're almost back to 38 so it doesn't look like a lot of technical damage was done but it was a tremendous move nothing like this move which is going to be the topic of the Ted Butler article that I'm gonna read you so we're looking for this crossover to continue at least up to the zero line it's possible it could turn around and go down and zigzag and we could continue to fall but a normal scenario would be this at least making it back to the zero line before it falls I would expect that that would take us somewhere into 4250 something like that before we have the next decision if this zigs and zags forms a flag my target as I have said is sixty eight dollars but that's a ways off I can't give a time frame on that the time frame if this flag well I'll give you an estimate so if we just had this flag pan out in the standard let's say we had a rising wedge flag formation this probably won't be into play but we'll draw it so the meeting of these lines is projecting roughly out I would just guesstimate roughly one, two, three, and four, four to five months. So you're talking October to November for if there's a flag formation for it to resolve to the upside. So that's the best time frame I can give you sometime in the fall. Now that doesn't prevent it from exploding or crashing. That can always happen. But if this type of a flag forms, then it would be looking at some time in the fall that it moves out of that range so let's jump over to Ted Butler and Ted Butler just released his article on the latest Smackdown I want to read a little bit to you on that he says the Commodity Futures Trading Commission CFTC holds that its primary mission is to protect the public from fraud abuse and manipulation Yet the public has just been subjected to fraud, abuse, and man manipulation in silver by virtue of the one-week 30% intentional price plunge, and the commission has not lifted a finger to protect the public or even to comment on it. How deep of a silver market plunge would it take for the agency to comment? 50%? 90%? I realize that silver had climbed in price sharply before its sudden plunge, rising by more than $20 per ounce from the end of January to a high of $49 by the end of April. That climb took three months. Almost $15 of that gain was wiped out in one week. I know that the popular version of what caused the price surge was irrational speculative buying, which created a bubble in the price that burst. But I also know that the actual data directly contradicts the popular version. 
CFTC data in the Commitment of Traders report indicates speculative selling into the price peak accompanied by commercial buying, short covering. Granted, the intentional price smash generated further speculative selling, but that doesn't change the fact that speculative buying did not cause the silver run-up. By remaining quiet on the matter, the CFTC is aiding and abetting the manipulation and the dissemination of false market information. This is as contrary to commodity law as is possible. In light of the highly unusual circumstances that surrounded the sudden decline in silver on no fundamental developments, the Commission's silence creates the impression among many that, th that it may be complicit in the decline. No good purpose is served by the impression that the CFTC is ineffective or worse in its most basic mission of protecting the public. Unfortunately, this impression has been nurtured by a regular pattern of apparent neglect on the public's interest of the public's interest in the commission by the commission. The public has notified the commission on numerous occasions and in great numbers concerning some very specific issues in the silver market, namely position limits and the concentration on the short side of the COMEX futures. The only reaction from the commission comes in personal comments by Commissioner Bart Chilton. While Chilton is to be commended for his acknowledgement of the importance of these matters, it is not right that the commission stays silent on an official basis. I certainly admit my own role in pressing the commission for answers to straightforward questions and in suggesting solutions for consideration. And that role included encouraging others to press the commission as well. Those that have contacted the CFTC know that these are serious issues that deserve to be fully aired. Yet with the exception of Commissioner Chilton, the agency has avoided responding to the public on all matters related to silver. This is not the correct way to serve the public. Away from the Commission, the silence on the part of the CME Group, owner of the COMEX, is equally outrageous. The latest intentional silver takedown began with the blatant early Sunday evening assassination of the price. The killing took place on the CME-run Globex electronic trading system, executed by exchange insiders. It was this electronic system that provided the means and opportunity and documented trading trail of the crime. The motive has always been the buying back of an uneconomic short position after first creating distress selling through manipulative dirty tricks. The well-timed margin increases by the CME amounted to piling on and adding icing to the crooked cake. Between the CFTC, which I still consider incompetent rather than duplicitous, and the CME, which I have always considered an ongoing criminal enterprise, you would think there would be enough silver silence to go around. But there's more. It has been two and a half years since I publicly identified and accused J.P. Morgan as being the big concentrated silver short and the chief manipulator. J.P. Morgan has managed to close out much of its short position at great loss, but still while bullying the market. Yet, in all that time, J.P. Morgan has never uttered a word about being accused of the most serious market crime possible. This despite countless lawsuits alleging the same silver manipulation some six months ago. I know that allegations and legal findings can be two very different things, but I never thought that an entity like J.P. Morgan or the CME would ever remain silent in the face of repetitive and specific allegations. And it goes on. I've said before I don't agree with Ted Butler that the CFTC is not complicit. I think the CFTC is complicit. I think that all the agencies are complicit. And, of course, you know my view on the government. I think the government is, is utterly corrupt, utterly unredeemable. Uh, it, it has to be, the, the slate has to be wiped clean because all of these people are completely corrupt. So it doesn't surprise me at all, but Ted's back and he's trying to sound the alarm and let them know how corrupt they are. I, I think he's probably wasting his time, but I wish him luck. He's a stalwart. He's the grandfather of all this. He spotted it before anybody, and he deserves credit. He's trying to do everything above board, and hopefully he will be proven to be right, and his name will be recognized for what it is. I seriously doubt that that will happen. I think that silver will probably explode in price and then you'll see government spin doctors come out and say things about strategic requirements and speculators causing the run-up and 
all kinds of stuff, you can just about guarantee that that J.P. Morgan will not be fingered in this manipulation. Now that's also contrary to Bix Weir's belief that there are good guys in this business who are waiting to expose the manipulation and shut down all paper currencies and reemerge on the other side with some kind of gold or silver backed system. I don't know if I agree with that either. We'll have to wait and see if that pans out. So I've gone ahead and added ads to my channel and I'd appreciate it if you'd click them or go to the sponsors. If that's a problem, go ahead and just click them off. I'm going to be spending this weekend trying to catch up with the series on FOFOA and some of the series and things, other issues that I haven't addressed and hopefully I can get some videos out this weekend to complete that series and we'll talk to you next time.